This Nutribiot is part of a series of videos called Nutrition After Critical Illness. This video will focus on swallowing problems, which is also known as dysphagia, what the causes are and what to look out for. However, if you have any questions or concerns, please speak to your GP or speak to your speech and language therapist. This video was produced with the support of an educational grant from Nutrinovo, manufacturers of ProSource clinical nutrition products. The company has had no involvement or influence in the content of this video. What is dysphagia? Dysphagia is a medical term, which simply means that somebody has difficulty or discomfort in swallowing. This can include food, liquid, and saliva. Severity of dysphagia can vary from person to person, and this is to be assessed by a speech and language therapist. Some of the causes of dysphagia may vary, but they could include stroke, Parkinson's disease, trauma, head and neck cancer, dementia, and medical treatments such as intubation on ICU. Why is dysphagia a problem? There are common problems that can occur with dysphagia, but it is important to understand that everybody is different, so people's experiences may vary. It's always best to speak to your speech and language therapist about any problems that you may have. Some of these problems may include, it may be difficult to eat enough food, thereby making it hard to maintain your weight. If this is a problem, please speak to your GP or dietitian. Food could enter the airway instead of the stomach, which could lead to choking or a chest infection, such as pneumonia. Struggling to swallow liquids can lead to dehydration, which can further complications such as constipation or a urinary tract infection. Struggling to swallow can also make eating less enjoyable. What are some of the most common signs and symptoms? Difficulty chewing or swallowing food. Coughing or choking during eating. Liquid or food unintentionally spilling from the mouth. A gurling sound when eating or drinking. Feeling like food is getting stuck in the throat or esophagus. And frequent chest infections. Some symptoms may be less obvious than others. These may include breathing pattern changes or changes to the sound of your voice shortly after eating or drinking. The speech and language therapist will assess these symptoms and evaluate whether they pose a risk to your overall health. How is dysphagia assessed? Dysphagia is assessed by a speech and language therapist who is an expert in identifying and treating swallowing difficulties. These could include a clinical bedside swallow assessment of your mouth and throat at stages of the swallow. On some occasions, you may take a moving x-ray of your swallow. This is called a video fluoroscopy or look at your throat through a camera called a fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallow or FEES. What can be done if a problem is identified? A speech and language therapist will make recommendations according to the way your swallowing problem presents. They may also provide particular exercises, strategies or maneuvers and will explain and demonstrate them to you. Furthermore, a speech and language therapist will advise you on the food and drink of a certain consistency, which should be taken to avoid any complications related to dysphagia. This is called a texture modified diet and uses the IDSI framework, I-D-D-S-I. And that stands for International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative. Once the speech and language therapist has advised on the safest consistency for you, a dietitian can help ensure that the diet is nutritionally adequate. Will it improve? Every case is different but it usually depends on the severity of the condition. Swallowing issues can resolve quickly, whereas others can take a long time to improve. Sometimes swallowing issues may not improve at all and actually may worsen over time. Alternative methods of feeding may be available, and it's important to speak to your dietitian and medical team regarding these options. For more information on dysphagia, please visit the following websites. Please contact your GP if you have any concerns regarding dysphagia or for a referral to a speech and language therapist. 
We hope you enjoyed this four-part series on eating well after critical illness. For more information, access some of the links provided in the description box.